Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be talking about this tropical wave that is coming off of Africa and has elevated chances of development. And also we continue to see a signal here that we are going to see the end of false fall and summer make a roaring return. And over the next couple of days, we are expecting some severe weather in the United States as well as we have a little bit of a negatively tilted trough eject into portions of the United States. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and consider hopping this video up it does help out the channel a lot. And let's get right into it. So out over here in the Atlantic, you can see that we do have a tropical wave just now off of the coast of Africa. You can see that there is some convection, not a whole lot of organization yet in our storm, but the signal is still there on our models. As you can see over the next couple of days, our chances of this storm developing has risen up to 50%. Still no two day chance yet, but an overall medium chance of development. That's why we have an orange now in the Atlantic. And as you can see, generally over the next couple of days, we are expecting our tropical wave to go off to the west and continue off to the west until about this area where it'll probably make a decision on whether or not to go northwest or directly west but uh, as of right now most of our models are still favoring a initial northwest turn now that doesn't completely rule out impacts to the united states but for now we are mainly going to be hyper focusing on where the storm is right now what it could do in the short term and then we'll figure out all the long-term details further down the line and one thing that kind of screwed us last time when forecasting that last system was where our dry air was going to set up and how the storm was going to interact with it so let's go look at our dry air environment and see where that is going to be kind of in the short term here and as you can see here's our pocket of moisture that is our wave just off of the western coast of africa this is the gfs model and as i push this forward you can see that we are going to have a decent amount of dry air circulating around this high pressure system that is on off over here in the northeastern Atlantic. And as our storm continues to push off to the west, it will be kind of driving into some drier air there. You can see there is some drier air slowly meandering down to the south as our tropical wave moves off to the west. And as this thing kind of pushes just before the Caribbean, at least according to the GFS, you can see that it is interacting with a decent amount of dry air there. Now, if this is a little bit more than what's predicted, we might end up seeing our tropical wave really struggle as it gets to this point. So still some big question marks on whether or not this storm is either going to develop in the first place. But it does seem like at least in the GFS, there is going to be some drier air sinking down to the south and it will eventually be battling more of that. Now, if we come over to the Euro model, you can see a similar picture, maybe even a little bit more dry air. Check this out. So there is some moisture off of the western African coast I pushed this forward and there's already just generally more dry air out there I think that's a little bit more accurate than the GFS we come over to our actual visible satellite it looks something like the euro you know you got that pocket of moisture and then some dry air already has sunken down pretty far down to the south so looking at the euro model you can see that looks pretty similar to our visible satellite so I think the euro's got a little bit of a better depiction here you can see it battles that dry air for quite a while maybe gain some moisture as we move into the 17th of September and then eventually, you know, the battle is on. Which one wins? I will say that's a lot of dry air there. And the fact that we have agreement from the GFS and the Euro on a, a lot of dry air being present, this might not be the storm that we have to keep an eye on. But hey, the models can change. Definitely want to continue to watch this storm. If you come over to our steering patterns, you can see that we are still expecting our high pressure system to be kind of way over here for a lot of this storm's life cycle, which means that there will be a weakness over here and also an opportunity for a low pressure system to develop up off of the eastern coast of the United States over the next couple of days. But again, our tropical system will be back over here at that time. So that's not really going to be too big of an issue. But you can see this 591 line. If that kind of stays there for long enough, we could see our storm try to ride a little bit more to the west, maybe have some western turns. But you can see it kind of retreats back up to the north as we go into September 18th. Our storm will be around here at this time. So generally, it'll still be allowed to kind of slowly move up to the north. And it really just depends on what this high pressure does. If it continues to kind of stay strong, and no weaknesses develop as you can see here on the EPS a weakness does develop maybe allowing our storm to sneak off to the north a little bit earlier but if this 591 line kind of stays connected all the way as the storm comes through it might take maybe a little bit more of a northern turn initially and then might kind of have some wobbles maybe some pretty significant wobbles to the west but again still a lot of question marks and all of that really is dependent on this uh, little high pressure system that's going to be existing down here you can see that we are going to have a couple of troughs eject off the United States that's what's going to kind of push and kind of destroy this high pressure system 
or at least keep it out of the picture for our tropical system after it moves a couple hundred to a thousand miles off of the African coast. And then you could see as we get a new high pressure develop just off of the eastern coast of the United States, that's really what's going to be helping to steer this storm. One of the scenarios that would technically bring some of this storm closer to the United States would be if this 591 line in this high pressure system becomes a lot stronger. That is going to bring some more shear though and also more dry air. So again, you know, still big question marks on whether or not this is going to be developing. But as of right now, we do have a 50% chance over the next seven days. So it's something to at least keep an eye on. But as we saw with that last tropical system, that is not a guarantee that it will develop. Now, if we come over to our ensemble member means, which essentially is just a bunch of little model runs all at once, making an average out here, kind of giving us a, a look at what this storm could do if you put just a couple of different scenarios in each one of those models. And as you can see, most of them continue off of the West here initially. I do see a couple of them trying to develop, but most of our ensemble members are still pretty weak as we get over here to the central main development region. And as you can see, as our high pressure system kind of gets scooted off to the east initially this low pressure or maybe tropical depression at this point starts to meander up to the north quite a bit and as we get into around forecast hour 216 you can see that we're starting to get a lot of uncertainty we do have some members closer to the caribbean and also some members further up to the north coming over to the gefs ensemble a little bit of a weaker signal now from the gef ensemble with a couple of members they're trying to develop but the majority of them are hanging around either just non-existent or barely a tropical depression depending on how much moisture but we know there's going to be plenty of dry air there so this might be a dying wave that a lot of these ensemble members are hinting at but yeah you can see generally though that high pressure system scoots off to the east bringing a weakness in that high we start to see some of these members move up to the north and then we also have some members moving off to the west over here as well so still a kind of broad area of where this storm can go still not a whole lot of certainty on whether or not it's going to form in the first place but it's still something to keep an eye on the chances and the signal is still there just definitely a little bit skeptical here with all of this dry and stable air still out over the atlantic but there's a lot of moisture coming off over uh, here in africa if this storm can get its act together a little bit earlier then maybe you can make a better argument that this could develop but i mean yeah you can see all of these oranges here just a lot of dry air so across the united states we are still monitoring this uh, upper level low that is located somewhere around this area here and you can see that it is infecting quite a bit of moisture out of the pacific out over over the United States. It's also going to be bringing some drier and warmer air aloft from Mexico too. So there could be some capping issues with some severe weather. But generally on the northern side of this, we are expecting a pretty big warm up here for a lot of folks out over in this region. And also a little battle zone here where we're going to have that cool air and that instability mix some forcing come in and try to cause some severe weather pretty much all the way from Texas up into Canada. First starting high above our heads and working our way down, you can see that there is a pretty stout trough here and it is even going to be a little bit negatively tilted, especially back over here. And you can see that in the 500 millibar, which is pretty much where planes fly, our winds are going to be decent enough. Our trough is going to be ejecting into this region, which means we're going to be seeing a pretty large area where we're going to have spreading a part of our wind vectors, which is going to cause enough forcing or basically avoid here where air is gonna have to rush in and that air rushing in is gonna become our storms and that's gonna happen pretty much all the way up here if we take this off you can see that we are expecting a marginal risk for severe weather today going all the way from New Mexico into Texas Colorado all the way up into Nebraska going into North and South Dakota as well. So our first little risk for severe weather will be out here. As you can see, it's not a big risk. Marginal risk is nothing to really be too scared about, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Switching over to our future radar, you can see that we generally do have some showers out there right now. And eventually, as we move into around 8 p.m., those showers will be pretty much non-existent. That trough is going to be slowly ejecting into the southern portion of the United States. So we're going to see a lot of thunderstorm activity here initially, at least for today, with some chances along this axis here for also some severe weather as well but most of our rain and thunderstorm activity is going to be relegated down here into Colorado near Denver down near Santa Fe and into parts of the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma. So I continue to push this forward. You can see those rain and showers continue off to the north uh, and east. We have this area of cloudiness kind of pushed through this area, which is going to bring some question marks for tomorrow, which is probably why we have a marginal risk uh, for severe weather out here. If 
I continue to push this forward and switch over to our upper level winds, you can see that our trough is somewhere in here, still a little bit negatively tilted. And we have this band here of some higher winds aloft, which again is going to allow for some forcing if there's enough instability. Coming over to our surface base cape, it does seem like we are going to have a pocket up here of 2000 joules per kilogram and another pocket back over here into parts of Oklahoma, all the way down into Texas. And looking at our lower level winds, you can definitely tell there is going to be some lower level winds with this as well. So there could be a little bit turning of height. So a tornado chance will exist if we can get some storms fire kind of in this area of the storm. And there are some over there into the Nebraska and Kansas border. As we go into about 3 p.m., you can see that we could have some maybe pseudo warm frontal storms up here as well that could have some vorticity and there is some instability up there so we could also see a little bit of a tornado chance up there as well you see a lot of these storms go linear pretty quickly outflow dominant so you know if we get more discrete cells it'll be something we have to keep an eye out for yeah you can see thunderstorm activity is possible all the way really from canada down into texas and if you look at our tornado chance we have a pretty large two percent extending all the way from northern kansas all the way up into north dakota so keep your eye out for severe weather and there could possibly be a tornado or two out out there really just depending on how these storms set up where that instability sets up where our capping sets up it's going to be kind of a messy day but there could definitely be maybe like a little bit of a clearing in the clouds that's not forecasted and all of a sudden you got a lot more of a serious day so it's kind of on the line we're going off into the long term a little bit there's our trough that kind of ejects out we have another trough kind of sink down after that positively tilted trough might bring some severe weather if there's any instability still there and things get a little messy. These troughs kind of dance around each other. Generally, that flow is going to be southeast here and then northeast there with some flow aloft over there into areas like Wisconsin, Iowa, going into Missouri. Dew points are going to be starting to rise a little bit here into the southeast as well. And if we come over here to our temperatures, you see going into the 18th, we are talking about things getting a little bit warmer. Let's bring this back and talk about those temperatures. So on the 13th today, the highs are going to be in the 90s out over here in the Ozarks, going up into the central plains also a little bit into the ohio valley as well 80s and 70s from the southeast up into the northeast and staying generally cooler here in the western united states as we go into the next day you can see those temperatures start to increase again over here near illinois as we can see up to 100 degree temperatures over there and given our dew points still being relatively low most places that's probably going to be more of a dry heat but there are some 60 degree dew points hanging around there so maybe a little bit moist or a little bit more humid for a couple folks with most of the ozarks in the southeast being more into a drier heat at least when you factor in what we're used to going into the next day it's going to continue to get hotter and hotter out here talking about 90s making it all the way up into minnesota Minnesota potentially also down here into Florida going into the Ohio Valley Southeast Ozarks so generally warmer gear in the Southwest cooler 60s and 70s still up in the Northeast then into the 16th you can see maybe another little cold front developing here that's that little system we were talking about look at our surface base cape there there is a decent amount there our 500 millibar winds associated with a trough that are it's way up to the north there so probably not going to be too much forcing there is going to be some lower level winds there as well so 16th might be another be another severe weather other day we have to keep an eye on if we come over here to our supercell composite you can see that there is going to be some chances for some thunderstorm activity and some showers showing up on our future radar it looks like that cold front is going to propagate down to the south and east a little bit before kind of falling apart again that trough is going to leave that front behind we might get it kind of stall out over here near oklahoma going up into parts of illinois but you can see that cold front will bring some cooler temperatures into minnesota wisconsin also into kansas as well with 90 still overspread a large area here from texas up into the ohio valley even Michigan into the southeast and as we go into the 18th that cold front still kind of sits in the same spot maybe still bringing some showers and bringing the temperatures down a little bit more there in Iowa and Missouri and the 90 degree temperatures continue across pretty much the same areas but yeah folks that's gonna be it for me I do appreciate you guys continuing to tune in and support the channel even during these quieter times when you guys come in and just say hi it's always great to see how you guys are doing but anyways I'll keep on watching the tropics in the United States it's still relatively quiet though so until next time I hope you guys have a good rest your week and I'll see y'all later. Peace.